Welcome to another Snack Tech video. Today I'm going to be showing you the Wecon 10 inch HMI. I've been working with this HMI for a few days now and I can give you an overview of how it works. So it's a 10 inch 800 by 480 HMI with resistive touch screen. It's got a USB port for programming and a USB port for loading external media. It's got a communication port for communicating with the PLC and a removable power plug. The HMI itself feels reasonably high quality. Before we turn this HMI on, we gotta take a quick look inside to see. Okay, let's have a look at this. This HMI is rated for IP65 from the front panel, but you can see that there's still some conformal coding on the single board computer over here. So that's a nice touch. That'll help with moisture reliability. We can see the Wecon branding on the individual boards which makes me believe that this is not simply a rebadged unit. It's always good to buy directly from the factory. That way you don't pay the markup price because generally the manufacturer will gladly sell directly to the consumer which is not usually the case with uh, North American based companies. So we can see the backlight cable here and while this reminds me of cold cathode backlights it does say LED most likely an LED. It'd be good to have an LED backlight for enhanced reliability. The single board computer is based on a Samsung S3C2416XH-4G. There's a Toshiba flash on there and a ESMT RAM unit. The conformal coating is a great addition and will hopefully ensure reliability. You can see here the real-time clock battery has got glue gobs just like the PLC did to hold it in. That's a nice feature because it's very unlikely that you'll ever change this battery. It should last the, the life of the unit. In fact, almost the whole board is conformal coated, so that is a great thing to see. That'll give good protection against moisture. I don't think there's anything under there really. There's just a uh, backlight driver board, so I won't be taking this apart anymore. I don't see a cold cathode driver on the board underneath, so it's definitely an LED lit backlit uh, display, which is nice. We can see even the single board computer here is branded Wecon. This is probably a high volume product. These are very popular in Russia where American dollar has a very terrible exchange rate, so they often use Chinese technology. When I got this um, HMI, it came with a demo program, but uh, I've since reprogrammed it, so I can't show you that. I'm plugging my 24 volt power supply. The HMI came with a 10 foot serial cable to connect it to the Wecon PLCs, and also with mounting hardware. This mounting hardware is designed to securely attach the back of the PLC, which has a rubber gasket along here to the enclosure and this hardware pushes against the back of the enclosure to securely mount the front of the HMI against it. So we started a new project in the Levi Studio U. You can see a lot of different PLCs are supported but we're going to use COM1 and Wecom PLC and we're presented with the blank slate. We can then compile and download to the HMI. Now this worked right out of the box no issues. I like how it automatically finds the HMI and the HMI reboots to our blank screen. So uh, in order to add a button we could use a bit switch and you can simply draw your button. Um, you can set up a grid like I did for every five pixels. It makes it easy to make aligned interfaces. It is a bit um, odd in that dragging does not snap to grid or at least not the way you would think so when you see me drag it's actually not snapping to the grid it's sort of snapping whichever nearest point that's not ideal but you can use the resize function to snap to the grid so that's what I've been doing it'd be nice if dragging an element would snap it to the grid that's set up 
So um, what we're going to do is we're going to read an input on a on the PLC as an example. So we simply double click on the button and we're going to read the the uh, X1 input on the PLC and um, and there's a lot of options. For example, we can make a blink when it's on and set the frequency. So I simply downloaded an empty program to the PLC and I have the PLC here and I'm going to connect X1 to the power and you'll see it changes the state of the button and it flashes. You can select the text for different states. So the off state and on state. Okay, compile. See what we get. I'll now touch X1 to high to a high voltage pin, and we see the flashing. Obviously, if you're writing, you can push the button. You can see the there's a light for touch and communication and power. And when you touch the PLC and it registers a touch, it comes on. Now with resistive touch screens, everybody I think has the experience of using a hard to use or hard to press resistive touchscreen like at an airport when you're trying to check in and you're pushing really hard. Nowadays they've gotten a lot better and this one is not is not uh, is no exception. You can push quite lightly and it accurately will register the touch. I'll add some buttons to show you. Push the big button and we get the built-in numeric keypad entry. Now it's not bad it could be better, in my opinion, but um, it could be more legible. But this will give you an opportunity to see how the buttons work. Uh, it's very responsive. Pretty happy with the performance of this HMI in terms of the touch input. It never pushes, you know, the button beside it when you're pushing here, which can happen sometimes on these resistive touch screens. Only time will tell how it performs over use. One thing that's really disappointing is the spelling mistakes in the user interface uh, for example invalid input you know these things would not take a lot of effort to clean up so that's example of the input so we set it and let's look at some of the advanced features of this we have a time display so let's put one in here it's got a date display let's try that one In order to map navigate to another screen, if you go to the project properties, you can make a new screen. Uh, we'll call it second. Uh, and in order to access the screen, you simply, one way to do it is to use the function switch. And you can configure it to show the next screen. Back to the HMI. Customize the graphs here. Here we can see the time, the day. Um, these elements obviously won't work because they're not connected to data on the PLC right now. Uh, let's see if the slider works. Slider works. Um, go for that bar graph. That should probably be bigger. But uh, let's see if the drop down list works. There we go. And this message up here is telling us that the error retrieving one of these parameters from the PLC, which makes sense. In order to access the hidden menu in the HMI for factor information, we push on the top right corner for a few seconds. And we get into this, uh, this mode here where we can do different, look at the factory testing menu. Uh, the error here is for no comm communication, which Makes sense, there must be some factory testing jig. There's a version number. So that's all there really is to this HMI. Um, I'm pretty impressed with it for the money. It's uh, about $150. And usually these HMIs run 
upwards of 500 for this uh, screen size. So it looks like uh, and it's built to last inside. So time will tell if it's worth it, but we can try the second screen. Now there's no way to go back, so yeah, so I'm pretty happy with this HMI. We'll, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, if you want to know more, just leave a comment and tell me what you think.